Okay, let's get started. Um, welcome back to another Everyday Growth Advisors webinar. This will be the webinar covering uh, this week's uh, market activity. Uh, we'll be covering <clears throat> quite a few things. So I want to kind of go over the market backdrop first um, and look over or rather talk about the investor sentiment that we have leading into this week. Uh, and then also some key market uh, developments in terms of investor mentality uh, that have kind of sparked interest this past month. Uh, heading into March, our strategies are going to be very different. And so we are going to have to adapt into new strategies that will allow us to really benefit from this new normal or the new nominal that we covered from the past week's webinar. So continuing on with this series, um, uh, I want to highlight the first and foremost uh, important thing about coming March and mar months to go uh, you know, throughout this year, uh, as you had seen, majority of what has been driving market activity into exuberance has been a new rise of a, you know, uh, internet driven phenomenon where everybody's, uh, you know, supposedly says that this new added access to data and information is giving them the benefit of making moves in the market. And, you know, many are from, I'm not going to say which society, but, you know, I think you guys know many people on the internet think nowadays that just by you having access to a little more data than usual, somehow you now have benefit ahead of everybody else. Uh, but, you know, as many of us know, this is simply not true. Um, you know, the data that you collect for free is never going to amount to data that you can pay for to receive from, you know, world-class um, establishments, okay? Uh, so no matter how much of research that you do, if you don't understand market structures, the issue is you always fall behind because you're constantly chasing a, a moving train. And I've mentioned this many, 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 many times on this webinar before. So this overarching market trend is here to stay. This is my the point that I'm trying to make. Um, investors or retail traders are still in a uh, phase where you know they feel it is absolutely um, you know okay to chase these market fads. If something happens, they run towards where the yield is the highest. Okay, and this actually makes it a additionally difficult market to trade within because this gives institutions an added layer from which to play off from. Um, not to mention that these huge institutions, in case some of you are not um, aware, have already started tracking what communities like Wall Street Bets are talking about on a daily basis through algorithms, through data-driven insights. Okay, They have created bots to look at the number of mentions of something or look at the amount of uh, you know, counts of things that people are saying about a certain stock and then forming their investment thesis around these ideas. So if in uh, if the sentiment around these things change, you know, the, the institutions will be very quick to react. Okay, so that's the market backdrop that I want to mention. It's a market backdrop. It's just, you know, what people are, are, are thinking that they can achieve and then there's the reality of what they can achieve which are two separate things altogether. In the short run, there may be this constant, um, you know, uh, willingness for people to take on additional risk for return that they think is what they are seeking. But in the long run, I'm going to say very clearly that this will end. It will end at some point. Okay, um, you know, gamblers will always find the next thing to put their bets on and lose. And you know, if you don't develop a hard mentality on how to follow market trends and how to understand these sector rotations or how to understand these business cycles, there is no way that you will remain profitable by the end of this year. So the aim here is to play a long game, not a short game. Okay. And hence there has to be strategy shifts with the way that we do things. Okay. So that's kind of like, in, keep that in the back of your head. That's in one file and one folder you know, in one drawer of your filing cabinet where you have to keep this in the back of your head that there is increased risk taking in the market backdrop, okay? Uh, and so having, having taken this element into consideration, uh, this week's webinar is concentrated on um, uh, highlighting a key few things, okay? 
So the first thing uh, that we need to highlight from last week was the fact that interest rates have been, um, you know, peaking, right? And uh, specifically the 10-year treasury, right? Specifically the 10-year uh, government bond, right? Which is the US 10-year, uh, was at 1.41, uh, peaked up to 1.556. And uh, on top of that, we had uh, the Treasury yield, uh, sorry, the dividend yield for S&P 500 at 1.57. And this was the major concern that was spooking investors last week. I'm just doing a little bit of a recap here to kind of highlight what happened and why the market dropped, um, uh, you know, further. Uh, as investors were, were starting to, to price in the fact that, oh, if the S&P 500 dividend yield is lower than the 10-year bond, then we should be buying bonds. But did that really happen? Did that really happen though? It happened on a very small scale, okay? There were some people who purchased 20 to 30 year bonds, 20 plus years, 30, which, is, which have higher yields, okay? But the broader bond market didn't really see much of uh, uh, insane amount of inflows, okay? Instead, I actually, we actually saw more money pumped into equities last week than we did see into the bond market. And therefore, you know, collecting this kind of data is important to me because, uh, you know, if we saw billions and billions of dollars being pumped into um, uh, bonds such as the 20 plus year, uh, which is the fat and tail of the, the yield, uh, then we could, you know, try to take a position against, you know, the bond market and say, okay, this is a time where we take up bonds um, and, you know, watch those yields uh, start to drop, okay? Now, obviously uh, the yield uh, rates, uh, they will come down, they have come down to 1.44, uh, and I'm guess, guessing that today uh, they will, uh, they, it'll, be, it'll be lower still, okay? Uh, so with the yields not really, you know, moving in a crazy manner, okay, I want to still remain tactically risk on with equities for the time being. Uh, on Friday, we spoke about a very, very important structure of business cycles that would affect uh, the bond markets only in the future. But at that point, it wouldn't just affect bonds, it would also affect equities and gold and everything along with it. Uh, and what we were mainly talking about was how this entire cycle will come here to close uh, sometime in the next two quarters, I would say, when the when the Fed decides that they want to start to taper interest rates, okay? Um, and that is simply because the, we cannot have this continue, right? We cannot have bond yields continue to rise. And you can see the correction already happened right? We went to 1.554 and then came down to 1.44, right? So we didn't go higher and higher and higher, which would have meant that we need to start crowding out of equities. We actually corrected back to 1.44. And today, um, you know, we're back at, uh, 1.41, right? 1.41 is where we're back at. So, uh, okay, we'll have to obviously continue watching this and how it goes in this next week. But as of right now, for this week and the weeks going beyond in March, I think we should tact tactically remain bullish on equities. However, not specifically everything from the U.S. stock market. Okay. So, uh, you know, if jitters continue with volatility on the S&P 500 and we see continuing up, up, up and down trends here, uh, which is very possible, right? Very possible. We've been bouncing between these two levels here twice now, and we could continue to do so, okay? Uh, we should be tactically taking our money and putting it into equities abroad. So specifically emerging markets, okay? Which I've been talking about for a while, okay? And, uh, you know, this is actually a really good one. Uh, specifically, you want to take a mix between other markets and uh, equities around the world and take risk there, rather than concentrating all your money into the US equities, which will be crowded and we'll see increased um, you know, turbulence in the, in the time to come. So in looking at a more safer investment, that would be the, the, the tactical shift that we would have to look at, okay? Um, because when money is scared, it runs to other forms of high risk. No, no one's gonna put money into bonds right now because it gives a crappy return and it doesn't give you enough of a yield in comparison to equities, okay? Not to mention the equity risk premium is still favorable for equities. Hence, we still remain tactically uh, pro on equities for now. <coughs> Moving on, 
The other uh, sector that we should look at is XLE uh, or the energy sector within the S&P 500, which still has considerable upside as oil prices continue to rise. OK, uh, so we can see that oil prices have still been on a continued rise. And I, and I spoke about this sometime last week that I think there will be a exuberance to the upside for oil now instead of the downside as we see uh, continued uh, continued response from OPEC that seems unfavorable for oil oil cuts until unless we get another uh, uh, sorry spike in uh, spike in um, uh, oil production we will see oil prices continue to actually climb up here and then we'll flip the other way like how we went to zero will go up into crazy oil prices and that will naturally cause a um, an increase in oil prices for energy sector which will lead to higher margins possibly. For these same companies okay and we know that the oil when we talk about crude oil we're not talking about just for gas or petroleum products we're talking about for everything remember that crude oil is you know fractionally uh, uh fractionally um distillated into seven different products and uh you know when that happens you you get like petroleum is like one of the few which are like up here you still have like paraffin and kerosene and a lot of different things that's the reason why oil is called liquid gold, right? It's black gold because it, it is very um, versatile, right? It's a versatile product, robust product, which can give you a lot of different products from within it. So we should also tactically uh, re um, remain risk on with oil. Okay, now there are two ways to play this. One, you can play XLE to the upside, okay? Which will, uh, you know, obviously give you exposure to uh, this, oops. Uh, which will give you exposure to the uh, oil sector directly okay and uh if you were to look at this from uh the swing recent swing low to the swing high here uh you know the target would be somewhere at 57 by the end of the month or so okay i'm looking at a four hour chart so we're looking at a wider time frame here okay uh and of course we want to actually wait for a pullback but i don't know if we will actually get it these are some really long wicks over here from a technical standpoint it does look like we will continue to run up here and so I think tactically this week, we should be looking at some oil exploration plays. I do, did have a position in um, XOP, remember that one? And I think I'm still gonna hold that position tactically. Uh, and this is a, the second play that you can take to, to take advantage of the oil and gas exploration. Remember that this um, sector has certain benefits that will back it, okay? Number one, you remember that a $1.9 trillion stimulus has just been passed, okay? And the stimulus is going to be aiding recovery, is going to be aiding uh, act, uh, additional market um, uh, activity. And then there's also a direct stimulus to people. I think they receive $1,400, right? We all receive $1,400. And um, uh, that is going to uh, definitely add a little bit of uh, uh, gasoline to this rally here, okay? As the economy continues to open up, we have additional news with jo Johnson & Johnson's one dose vaccine being approved for uh, uh, use in the US. We are diversifying our vaccine uh, bundle and things like that. I think that te remaining tactically pro risk on equities is a really great idea, okay? And the Fed that's gonna remain dovish will remain dovish as long as they can. So we shouldn't be bothered by the drop in bonds right now because it doesn't make sense to be bothered. The rate stabilized, we had the little drop because there was a little bit of exuberance, but that exuberance will not continue until the Fed says something like, oh, hey, we're going to do this and we're going to do this and we're going to do this. At that point, then only we should look at bonds. All right. For right now, watching this, it obviously still like a hawk, but we'll be very careful with how we see the bond movements work in our favor or not. OK, so those are a few things. Now, uh, the other sectors that we have to watch for. So for the month, I'm talking about monthly now. We're talking about secular trends or we're talking about trends within the month. Okay, one is oil exploration, oil in general, energy. These are the, this is one sector that I, I would like to trade. I would like to get into long positions here. I see the, um, you know, the, the likelihood of oil prices rising. I see that benefiting this sector as a whole. Uh, and the reason why oil prices are likely to, to, to hit up is because of uh, the obvious reason that OPEC and OPEC plus, um, they will probably fail to come to an agreement. Remember that it's a combination of many different countries that have to work together to get it done. They have to increase output in order for oil prices to stabilize. And right now it doesn't seem to me like they will, okay? So uh, this may continue to run up into exuberance far beyond the um, 
uh, the all-time high here, okay, going back up to $100 per barrel is very, very possible. We'll see if we can break 63, 64 this week, 65 even, 66, and then we'll try to have a resistance up here at around um, 72, 73. Uh, I will also be pulling up uh, data from CapEx to see what we get from, from uh, the uh, uh, oil uh, barrel supply from Cushing's. Uh, which we should be able to provide, I think, let me see. I'll try to find that and put it out on the Discord for you guys to have a look at. Uh, what will be the balance of supply and demand for uh, the coming weeks and what we're talking about, okay? So this week's uh, theme of the week uh, is, you know, I think it, it's fitting to say that we are, the, the theme of the week should be exuberance ex unfolding, right? Exuberance unfolding should be the theme of the week. And I think that's what we'll title the webinar as well. Um, as exuberance unfolds, you, you you know, even exuberance has false breakouts, okay? And this is what I'm trying to, I'm trying to tell you guys, um, even with when you see exuberance push bond prices up to a certain way, it could be a false breakout, okay? And the bond yields that you saw were a, a good example of a false breakout. So, um, exuberance unfolding is what we'll see this coming month, and we have to be very, very careful with how we deal with it. Okay, so we have one secular trend, emerging markets, which is JPEM, and then also, I also mentioned many times, KWEB is the other one, okay? So either way, if you want to have exposure only on China, emerging markets, you can go with KWEB, K-W-E-B. If you want to go with the total exposure on uh, worldly emerging markets, I would go JPEM, Okay. But you can see uh, that, you know, they're pretty much similar, right? But if you're buying shares, then you probably want to go for, um, you know, uh, exposure where you can risk less and, and uh, have a better return on investment. Okay. So these are pulling back nicely to their dual zones right here. And I think they are good little um, uh, things to, to take in the time being. Uh, even KWeb is possibly pulling to the dual zone. Uh, we'll see if we can get a bounce on this level sometime this week for an entry. That is what I'm looking at. Okay. Uh, KWeb to bounce somewhere in this region here at the $84 or $85 level. And for JPEM, uh, I want to bounce on this uh, 54, 50, uh, somewhere $54 level. That would be nice as well uh, to take this to the upside and play the bounce uh, on emerging markets going into the next two or three months. Remember that this is a swing trade that will last for a while. Okay. And so it's a long position. It's not meant to be a short term position. Okay. Uh, Short-term positions will be discussed on the snipe list, which we will post pre-market, okay? Uh, all right, what is the other sector that has been hit this month? So let's have a look. So uh, this month, Apple got murdered. Facebook, Amazon, Tesla's down 21% after a huge run. This, you, I think you guys saw this coming already. We've talked about this for a long time, right? Uh, I've been talking about how Tesla is overvalued for a long, long, long time. Okay. This is not something new. This is not something that we are surprised about. This is a nominal correction on Tesla. It had to happen. It has to happen. Okay. Um, and you know, with the market backdrop, with the overconfidence, you can take some, uh, high risk plays, which I had done. Remember I took a $1,000 call on Tesla, hoping that it would go even higher in exuberance, but we bet very small on it. Right. And so it's okay to take those kinds of gambles and lose like 1%, 2%, 3% of your portfolio on a gamble. But don't be going all in 20%, 30%. You know, that's when you kill your portfolio. Remember that that's not what we teach you on at EGA. That is not something that we uh, concentrate on, okay? Now, the other sector that I want to highlight is healthcare. And healthcare is going to continually benefit from these, um, these uh, times, okay? Now, Teladoc is one of the companies that we should be looking at over here. Uh, T Doc, really good company that's uh, you know prefer like came back into a very nice uh, level of uh, uh, buying over here. There's also a, a channel which you can see right here. Okay, it has been kind of going exuberant a little bit, but uh, we can see that it's on the bottom of the channel and it really bounced nicely here. I'm looking to take this to the upside, hopefully this week. Okay, for a long swing. The other one is United Healthcare right? United Health. Okay. This is another one that's come down and showing signs of a reversal. All right. We look at this on the one hour, you'll see it's starting to make higher highs again, trading above the moving averages. And this is another one that I want to trade to the upside. Uh, these are two tickers that I like from healthcare. J&J &J will probably be up by uh, pre-market. 
Uh, but those are the two that I like right now that uh, will benefit from this situation, okay? The rest of them, your Pfizer, J&J, &J, whatever else, I'm not very interested with. Abvi might be another might be another one, but I feel like it has run already, okay? So we'll see uh, if we can possibly get an entry here, but it is also in an uptrend. Um, and, you know, this will possibly rally, but I don't want to pin my hopes on it. Okay. This is also in an uptrend. You can see this right here. We'll see if we can continue up here, but it's already up on, like, you see where it is. It's, it's somewhere up here. So naturally we want to see the resistance up here and then come back down for us to enter to the upside. So this is no good for an entry. The other two are slated for an entry right now if we can see confirmations above the existing price levels, okay? Uh, and so that is all, that is all. Uh, United, so healthcare, energy, continued press and energy. Um, and then if you want, I think technically, to going slightly uh, uh, risk on on tech makes sense here, especially stocks like uh, Amazon. I think it's super undervalued at this point. Uh, I think there's a good time to pick up Amazon. If you were looking to add, Amazon for your long-term portfolio, this is the moment to do it. You add some, add some more to your position. Uh, Facebook, not yet. This is still in a downtrend, okay? Uh, Google, possibly, but I think it's uh, also, I wouldn't really get into Google at this spot right here. Uh, Microsoft, good time to add Microsoft for sure, but also farming into a, a downtrend, but we'll see how that goes this week. Uh, those are technically, and then Apple is the last one, which I think uh, is approaching my level of buying, but still currently overvalued, still currently overvalued. Uh, so, I mean, you could buy Apple stock here, but I think, uh, you know, realistically, it comes down to 112, 113. Uh, this is also obviously a good level to buy because it, this has been, this is the demand zone right here, the gray box that you see. Uh, but Ultimately, I think, uh, you know, if Apple really wants to sell off, it can come down to the 112 level, which is where I'll add majority of it for my long-term position, if I can get it at that price. If not, I will add some when it comes back down here, add a little bit more as it goes back up and if so on and so forth. Okay. So that's uh, the plan of action for this week's webinar. Uh, I hope that you, um, you know, enjoyed it. Uh, remember, this is my secular trend approach for the next month of March. Okay. It's the month of March. And then next week we'll cover more granular, granular views of the market. I'll go through more sectors that we can look at, but these are the main sectors that I want to look at. Also, uh, just closing out here, uh, this month, I will no longer be taking, uh, any day trades or uh, uh, not, um, uh, day trades to begin with. Yeah. I, I will not be doing intraday day trades. Majority of my time will be spent doing swing trades and selling premium on the $10,000 portfolio. Okay. Uh, reason being because uh, sometime the mid of this this month, uh, my CCIV puts are going to expire, and whatever premium that I gain in, in doing that process, uh, I will be using to offset um, any plays that I will be uh, taking in this coming month. Okay, and I will be concentrating more on swing plays that will benefit my portfolio in the long run, rather than concentrating on short term plays of uh, and looking for momentum and volatility. This is exactly where. Traders who have just been learning in the market for a year have trouble, okay? And this is why you need guidance from somebody to help you out looking at these things because it is not easy to find these opportunities, all right? If you're following somebody who's been trading for a year, they don't know how to find the more bigger secular trends based on market conditions. And this is what you need help with. You need to understand what's happening, why it's happening, and then take those plays to set yourself up for success for the whole month. If if a day trader who has just been trading for a year steps into this market and relies purely on technical analysis, they can't find momentum, they can't find volume, they can't find anything to take, and they don't know when the market's about to reverse, right? And so the, the only thing they would know is the charts and how to do that, which is why you have to diversify your skill set, okay? You have to diversify your skill set. Um, so for those who are listening in and, uh, you know, you still haven't uh, heard about our technical analysis course, remember that this is the last week uh, to log in uh, to get the technical analysis course uh, um, signed up. We're only going to be offering this course once this month. 
Uh, it's under the big uh, courses on our website. Click on beginner and you can click join our technical, uh, our beginner's fundamental uh, course, which will teach you a little bit of uh, technical analysis and fundamental analysis. It's a fully comprehensive course. And then sometime this week, we're also going to be launching the technical analysis course, like the advanced course, which, which will be announced on Instagram. So stay tuned for that. Um, that will be uh, me teaching you market structures and the curriculum curriculum on that one is really nice. And I think that you guys will enjoy it. Okay. So this is where I end the webinar. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, have a great, great week and good luck.